no matter what a pastor does, there will always be sin employed that will devalue that pastor's worth to the kingdom and devalue his value, no matter what he does. No matter what a bishop might accomplish, sin is still employed and it will raise up aught that will devalue the bishop, his values, and his work. Praise eliminates aught. We'll this out with a scriptural, scripturally authorized leading tabulator of wealth given to the church for souls to be saved. That's what wealth is all about. It's given to the church for souls to be saved. Let's break this down. When God said, <clears throat> speaking of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, let us make man in our image after our likeness. This, this, this word image is all important. What God is saying here, the word image, by the way, means a representative figure, a figure that represents something, representative figure. Now, when God said, let us make man in our image and after our likeness, he said, let us make man in a representative figure. A representative figure of what? The purpose, the plan, and the expectation of God. What is the action of love? What is it? Love is trust with an attitude of giving. Love is trust with an attitude of giving. What does it mean to trust? Well, trust, let me give you the letters for that. To turn over resources under scriptural truth. Trust is to turn over resources under scriptural truth. Now let's come back. Love is action, not a reaction. I'm not reacting to you or anything you... I love because I'm in Christ. I'm loving you. And a part of love is trust with an attitude of giving. And he's saying to us that we've got to walk in love. We trust. And to trust is to turn over resources under scriptural truth. He's talking about being in the house. That God told us to build. He's talking about the people who are in this house. And he said, this is what I want to do for you. And the thing I'm going to do is a new thing. A new thing. Now the purpose of a new thing What's the purpose of it? God's doing pretty good. I mean, you know, why is he going to do a new thing? Well, a new thing will make the old impossible become the new possible. Everything that has been impossible for you Today, God said, I'm going to do a new thing. I'm going to take the impossible of your yesterday, and I am going to turn it around and make it possible for you today. <clears throat> this morning, about 4.30, God woke me up. And he said to me at 10.45, he said, the new will be moving into the now. Hallelujah. All over this country, all over the world, the new that God promised us last year at 1045 moved into the now. Hallelujah. So get ready. Hallelujah. Get ready. How many of you are ready to rise? 
into the new that is in the now. A true follower of Jesus doesn't have a problem living the Christian life. The problem the follower of Jesus faces is the life of the world that surrounds them. If you are a true follower of Jesus, you will not have a problem being saved. You will not have a problem with sin. We are sin free. So if you are a follower of Jesus, you don't have a problem with living for Jesus. The LM's a church, but the body carries the vision. Elam's a church, but the body of Christ, the body of believers, carry the vision. They carry the vision. And so we have to make sure that we uh, are fitted by the Word so that we can fit into the body that we can carry this vision forward. I, I, over the years, being in church all of my life, I've seen some great visionaries come great men and women of God that God has given a vision to, but because the body had not been fitted by the Word and fitted jointly together, the person's vision did not go anywhere. Everywhere you go, you should, you should always be prepared. Always keep a laugh in your pocket, so to speak. No matter what you face, no matter what you see, no matter what you encounter, make sure that you can uh, that you can laugh, or you can smile, or you can have the joy of the Lord on you. Because if you do, you'll be successful. Start looking at things the way Jesus looks at them. Don't look at things the way humanity looks. Look at them the way Jesus looks. So, Jesus, I want to see things the way you see. I want to see it the way you see it. If I look at it through human eyes, I want to throw up both hands. But if I look at it through your eyes, I'm looking at the finish. Jesus said, I am the author and the finisher. When I'm looking through the eyes of Jesus, I see me finishing this race with a crown on my head as a winner. My concern is not about all those around me. All I can do is see me standing there in the winter circle with a crown on my head and hearing God the Father say, well done.